Hi, welcome to Flight Test. I'm Josh, and today we're going to be doing the build video of the Foul Flyer Swappable. Now, if you guys haven't seen the review of the Foul Flyer Swappable, it's actually a miniature sized Foul Flyer from our last year's uh, Thanksgiving episode where we made a Butterball Turkey flag. But this is a much smaller version, although it is our biggest swappable. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and download the plans. Uh, get your pod built. If you haven't built a pod and this is your first swappable, everything is based around the pod. And we'll have a link below showing you exactly how to put your pod together. So go ahead and get that done. Get your plans ready. Get your pieces cut out. And we'll get started. Our first step in building the foul flyer will be to build the wings. Now the wings seem intimidating, but they're actually very easy to build. Now for the wings, you're going to need a razor blade, tape, hot glue, and of course the pieces for your wings, which are gonna be the two spar pieces and your two main wing panels. Make sure your score lines are cut and the indent lines are indented with a popsicle stick, um, like we've shown before on the FT Bloody Wonder and the Baby Blender. After you got that step, we're ready to go ahead and bevel the ailerons and the leading edge. Now to bevel the leading edge, take a brand new number 11 X-Acto knife or a straight blade if you prefer, and it's just like cutting a hinge, like you've done on all the other FT uh, swappables uh, in the series. You wanna make sure you don't go through that center paper and give it roughly a 45 degree angle, keeping as close to the center line and keeping your cord of your cut as similar as possible. Now the only difference is we're gonna actually do this on the leading edge on both top and bottom of the wing panels. This will give it a nice area to crush down on and give you a nice round smooth leading edge that is also incredibly strong. Once you've gotten the leading edge done, we're gonna go ahead and cut your aileron bevel as well. Make sure you have good range of motion, and we're good to go. And if you haven't done so already by now, go to your reference lines drawn for your indent, take your popsicle stick, and then just go ahead and run it down, just give a real light indent. You don't wanna break through the paper, you just wanna simply crease it down a little bit so the paper knows exactly where to fold. If you do that right, it'll fold uniformly and give you a nice, complete airfoil. Now keep in mind, when cutting out these wing panels, all the score lines and indent lines are gonna be on the top surface. On the FT Bloody Wonder and the Baby Blender, the aileron score line was actually cut on the bottom. You'll notice in the plans, whenever it's cut on the very bottom, you'll see a dotted red line. If you have a solid red line, that means you cut it on the same surface. The next step now that we have all of our bevels cut and our indents made is to flip the wing panels over so you're actually looking at the outside surface of the wing panels and we're gonna apply a piece of tape joining these two wing panels together. So take extra special time to make sure that everything is square and true on the, both the leading edge and the trailing edge um, because if it's slightly off, where your bevel marks meet in the middle are not gonna exactly meet. Once you're happy with the fit there, we're gonna go ahead and fold this over. We're gonna lift up right on the center here and we're gonna take our hot glue and we're gonna fill this void with hot glue. Now we're in between the folds, we're just gonna put a dot in between each fold. Reason being is we don't want the hot glue to seep in between our folds and inhibit our crinkling. We wanna keep that as clean as possible. Once the glue is dried, we're gonna go ahead and take the packaging tape and we're gonna go and seam the tape from the back part of the fold toward the trailing edge. And then we're gonna carry that on from the front of the leading edge where it's indented all the way to the front. Now what this is gonna do is eventually make this a nice, solid, consistent piece. Now even though it has a little bit of bevel in it, it's not gonna come apart at these seams and that's our ultimate goal. Our next step is just like we've done in the Baby Blender and the FT Bloody Wonder, is to taper the back trailing edge. Now, in the previous versions, we've actually tapered the back trailing edge of the top of the wing panel. Our ailerons are on the top of the wing panel, so we're gonna to wanna to do the same process on the bottom wing panel on this one. For this technique, we're gonna cut a hinged bevel like we normally do, but we're gonna to try to bring it as far forward as possible for the first cut. Once again, using a nice sharp X-Acto blade. The reason I like to do this while it's taped together is because it's easier just to go from one edge to the other and keep them all uniform. If you're concerned about the looks of it, you can always take some nice 50 grit, 100 grit sandpaper. Now that we have the wing panels ready for the spars is to assemble our spars. And to do that, we're gonna take these two cut pieces right here, and we're gonna go ahead, we have a 50% score cut going through here. We're gonna go ahead and crack those loose. And then we're gonna apply glue on the spar. One to mind, keep it in mind, if you have a hot glue that can produce enough for these long glue joints, it's always beneficial. Now this is by far the biggest swappable we've built so far and then press it down on a nice straight flat board. 
Now that we have our two spar pieces, our next step is to join them together right in the middle. And the reason why we did this is we didn't want a clean break on the spar right in the middle of the wing. We wanted to overlap these. And take your time when letting this dry. This is one part where you want to let it dry nice and square and solid. You can smear it around, break that surface tension, spread it really good. Now that this is dry, go ahead and do a test fit. If you're happy with the fit, go ahead and glue it down. If you're not happy with the fit, now is the time to make the adjustments. Also, if you want to try to cut out some custom inserts to cover this wing panel, now would be a good time to shave off 1 17th of an inch exactly, or I believe a half a centimeter, uh, off each tip. And that will give you the ability to recess a panel in there and cover up the inside core of your wing. If you guys noticed our silver plane, we tried wing plates that were external that were a little bit bigger. Had no benefits in the flying characteristics, and frankly, I didn't like it. Now I have the spars trimmed down just slightly for the uh, mod I want to do later. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, put glue on the spar. Now I don't usually put glue on the tabs because I don't want to drive the glue down and glue it to my building board or in this case the bottom wing. Set this down in, give it a little bit of wiggle, make sure you spread that glue down, smear it out a little bit. Anytime you can smear the glue and spread it, it makes a stronger glue joint. Just for some extra strength, I'm going to go ahead and run a bead now that this is glued in, right down the edge of the spar, just to make sure it's firmly fastened to the actual wing. Now that our spar is installed, we want to establish the uh, curve of our wing. So simply take a long straight edge, if you have one, and hold it down firmly, and then simply pull the wing up and establish a bend on each portion. And take your time and kind of work it out as you're going. That will give this time to bend and conform. But you want it to actually be under a little bit of pressure because it makes a nice, solid leading edge. It looks really, really nice. Now we're ready to go ahead and open it up, apply glue on the leading edge and the top of the spar, We'll hold this down, keeping in mind that we want this trailing edge to be nice and square as possible, along with the leading edge and the side plates, if at all possible. Now, once you're happy with the fit, just spread your hands out right around the middle here and hold it down until it's thoroughly dried. Now that glue is nice and dry on top of that spar, you can see we still have the back half of our trailing edge to a glue. What we're going to want to do is flip this over on its back, lift this up, just as you see here, put a bead of glue right on this trailing edge here, right in front of your uh, hinge lines, and then hold this down with a nice even pressure. All right. You wanna keep it in a little bit and not go all the way to the edges so when it squeezes out, it doesn't actually squeeze out onto your aileron hinge line. Once the glue is down, we're gonna sim simply hold even pressure, making sure that all the glue joint meets up with the bottom of the wing plate. Now the nice thing about this is say your bevel wasn't perfect, it's going to be on the very bottom of the wing. So as long as your aileron has enough throw to go about a half inch each way, you're good to go. You don't have to worry. You could actually not even bevel this at all. The only thing is you lose glue surface, which does compromise a little bit of strength. Our last step now that the wing panels are together and we're happy with the way everything fits is to give some extra reinforcement right in the center here. The reason we want to do this is because the rubber bands are going to be going down in that area. So I'm going to use this extreme pack and tape go a little bit wider and a little bit longer overlapping it roughly about a quarter of an inch. As you can see, I, I actually lift this up. I'll just fold this underneath. We'll flip it around. That's one solid piece. Now the wing is officially done. We're gonna put this aside until it's time for the servos and putting on the fuselage. Our next step is to get all the pieces cut out and scored according to the plans. So we got that right here. And we're going to go ahead and put the pieces aside, all except the fuselage. Now, careful note, when you're cutting out your fuselage, uh, try to make all your straight cuts first. I know there's a lot of notches in here because it's made all out of one sheet and folded together. But if you cut your straight edges first along here and then come back and make your notches, it makes a far easier build and it's a lot less intimidating. It's very easy to cut this out by hand. Um, don't be intimidated by it, even though there's a lot of curves and a lot of stuff going on. Just keep careful note on what's a uh, bevel or a uh, score cut and what is cut through. Red will always be score, black will always be cut through. All right, now that we have this step done, our next step is to simply bend this back, and just like we've done on a power pod, remove that extra foam from the inside of those grooves. There we go. Now, because this is gonna have a huge cargo area, and we also put our battery on here, our next step before we go ahead and assemble this, it's far easier to put reinforcement tape down right here where our batteries are gonna stick and components are gonna go in. Uh, we can always go back later and put down tape on the outside to reinforce it, but oftentimes it gets really wrinkly and messy. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this extreme packing tape and I'm gonna actually go right to this edge and I'll explain to you why in a second we're gonna do that. I'm gonna coat this whole bottom here. 
it as smooth as possible. This will keep it when you put your Velcro down for your battery in the future, this will keep it from pulling that paper up because the Velcro strips are actually sticking to your tape and not your foam board. And once you got that down, you can actually go ahead and flip it around, cut off the excess. Before we fold this together, go ahead and take a popsicle stick and line up on this back edge and just simply make a quick indent along these two edges here because that's where the taper is going to be on your fuselage. It'll just give you a nice uniform crease. Uh, what we're going to have now is two different style of folds and in this case the fold we're going to do is going to be a B style. The A style will always be where the side plate goes over the bottom plate and in this case the side plate is going to stay on the bottom and go up against the bottom plate here. The reason we're doing this is to keep the aesthetic so when this comes down and we coat it with paper that it's a nice smooth transition on there. Now that the one side of the fuselage is 90 degrees and glued solid, we're going to do the same process, doing a B-style fold on this bottom plate. Starting a half of an inch in, putting just enough glue to fill that void and squirt out just a touch and starting and finishing a half an inch from the back. Once we got that in, we're going to carefully fold it up. Always try when you do your fold, the portion that's going to be on the bottom um, to be pushing against the bottom of the table. That'll keep everything nice and level. Next joint we're going to make now that our side cheeks are done is we're going to go ahead and put glue on the top surface doing another B style fold. And then we're also going to go along on the other side and put glue on this surface here. We're going to fold this over, making sure that the B style is confirmed here. And now we're going to notch this in and line it up the way we need to to make sure it's pushed back. And simply hold that in there. Once again, this top plate is gonna be level with the top surface of your side cheek, thus a B-style fold. Now the top place is fastened and everything's still looking good and square, we're gonna do a B-style fold on this very top. We're gonna put glue in here, and then also along these bottom cheeks, or side cheeks right here. And we want the top surface of this to be flush with these side faces, that's why I put that that way. And we're gonna want to fold this over, like I said, to a B-style fold, and then push this down carefully to make sure that this is nice and flush. If you've done all this right, this bottom tab should slide in nice and even. Now if it's slightly off, now would be the time to kind of move it around because you can adjust this a little bit. But the nice thing with these folded fuselages is it should come out perfectly square by going in this order for you. Now the back part of the cockpit's done. We'll simply apply glue on the bottom of these notches. Also maybe a little daub here and here, here and here and we'll simply set this down. All right, for the back side of the fuselage, I'm gonna simply put a bead on the top of the fuselage here, where it's gonna meet up, and then also another bead on the bottom here of the side plate. Then I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around, just on a nice flat building board, keep everything flat. Kind of pull up a little bit so you can lift it down and then push it right down on top of there. And make sure you hold it until it's nice and thoroughly dry. Because this is under pressure, it's gonna to wanna to move away. So take your time, don't be in too much of a hurry. Now that we're almost done with our fuselage, you guys can see that hopefully taking an extra time to cut it all out of one piece provided great dividends at the end with giving you a nice square cut fuselage. So by all means, take your time when you're cutting these plans out to make sure that everything is square and true. And don't be too intimidated about cutting the slots and making it a fold together. Because oftentimes when it folds together, you come up with nice clean joints that will self-align and give you a nice true fuselage. Our next step with this is something that wasn't on the original review but we designed it later. What we did is we made a simple shelf where you can pull out a pin and then the whole front nose comes out uh, for you to access your GoPro, access your battery, and so on. And this is actually done very simply by just assembling two simple pieces which we're going to do right now. Uh, the first one's going to be your shelf. Now this is going to be an A style fold so go ahead and remove your foam paper like you always do with these guys. Simply apply glue, once again not going quite to the edge on either side. And with this one being an A style fold we're going to fold the bottom plate up pushing against the bottom of the table to give it that nice clean fold look. Extra glue is extra weight, but if you force it back on the joint, it's extra strength. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and do the other side. It's always nice to keep a triangle nearby just to make sure that you're always keeping things as close to 90. And we'll go ahead and assemble the next piece, B style once again. And by forcing this down against the building table, it also keeps you from getting at a weird angle on there. It keeps everything nice and 90 degrees. 
And we're gonna go back to our little shelf here. Now this is for the GoPro, and the reason why we did it on as a A-style is we when this glue is glued in, we want the surface of this to be able to sit down on top of uh, these guys here. If it was like this, you could see that the only thing holding together would be the paper, and we don't want that. But before we go much further, let's just check the fit out and make sure that we're happy with this fit. This will simply go right to the edge, as you see right here, and I feel really good about that. First, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it with extreme packing tape, though. Sometimes it's easier to put your tape down, physically put your piece right down on top of it, using your building board to keep everything nice and straight and true. And we wanna glue this side here, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the excess. I don't wanna wrap it around like we normally do with excess tape. I want a nice solid glue joint on this, especially since it's gonna hold a nice expensive camera. The one thing you do not wanna have is have this be in front of the outside curve. Um, in other words, just to make it obnoxious, you don't want it to look like this. You always want a little bit back or flush, but not like this. The easiest way to do this will be to make some reference marks once we're happy with our location with a pen or pencil. Just to give us an idea on where we need to stop our glue, like that. Pull this out. Strategically apply some glue. Once again, I'm staying generously on the inside of my areas that I want to cover. You see, I'm not putting too much in there. I'm not going too crazy. We'll simply kind of pull this in a little bit. Be careful not to crease it. You can fold this on the inside. So it doesn't push it all the way to the back, it actually smears. And with the glue, we have a little bit of time to line everything up. So take that time and use it to get it exactly how you want it. Now that we're happy and our bottom plate is nice and secured, once again, make sure if it does protrude out on either one of these sides here, go ahead and trim it back or sand it back now because we don't want this to be anything more than flush. Flush or recess a little back is just great. Uh, our next step is going to be to make the top part of our hatch, which we've already done, and test fit it. And the way it's drawn in the plan is to have a little bit of an angle up in this flat spot right here. The reason being is when this is cinched into its final place, I want it to pull tight. I want it to actually cantilever against the outer surface of the paper and physically cinch up the paper. So go ahead and test fit this. Make sure that you start off with this being flush on the back and then make all your adjustments on the bottom end right here. And as you can see, I need to take off roughly, I'm guessing about an eighth of an inch or a couple millimeters. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now on each side. Go ahead and check that out again. Once again, taking us back to this back plate right here as our reference. And we are now there. Our next step will be to cut out our poster board. I'm gonna cut it slightly wider. Once it's all glued up, I'm gonna come back and trim it all into shape and that way it's nice and flush. Now we got our, our premium heavy duty poster board. If you hold the paper by the very edge, you can see that this doesn't flow very much or bend very far. But if you go the same distance and hold it this way, you can see this does. That means the grain of this paper runs this, this way because it bends much easier with the grain than against the grain. I want to go against the bend, so it's actually fighting against me a little bit. So this nose is super, super hard when you push on it. Um, if you go with the grain and it bends really easy, it'll actually have a little bit of a dimpling effect. So just take your time. It's not rocket scientist, and it's not necessarily that you need to do this, but it makes your process a lot of easier. So I'm going to cut my rectangle right here. Now, if you guys have built the baby blender before, this is gonna be a very uh, familiar feel to you because on the Baby Blender, we also wrap that with poster board as well. Now we have our piece of heavy duty foam board paper cut out. And to match the textures, there's a shiny side and a doll side. You can see the poster board, the doll matches a lot better than the shiny. It doesn't really matter, but I'm gonna go doll to doll. That way when I paint this, hopefully it'll give me the same texture. It doesn't give it a little bit darker or lighter. Purely aesthetic. But what we're gonna wanna do is simply take this top uh, hatch piece, I guess you can say it, and simply center it up the best of our abilities on the very edge and make a reference line on both sides. We're then going to carry that reference line all the way along the sides, keeping it parallel with the edge of your paper. As long as you cut your poster board nice and square, you should be able to do this. Once we've gotten this done, our next step will be to physically tape this flush to flush on that reference line. Simply gonna line this up right here, right on that edge of that reference line, push it up against the edge of the paper. Once you're happy with it, 
simply fold it down. Now you can see that we're starting our curl. The reason we want to put tape here is so it doesn't pull off. Even though we're going to glue it nice and solid, we don't want to take a chance of that moving on us. Once we have that and we're happy with it, simply apply our glue. For this moment, just right here on the very beginning. And we're going to sit there and let that set until it's dry. Now the reason I didn't say to put this on the full back here is because then you'd have to rush. I want you guys to be able to have a good fastened beginning and then you can simply concentrate on holding at the very end. It'll make life a lot easier on you. So take your time, don't rush and jump ahead. If we've done everything right, we can simply put our glue on both sides and we're going to roll, pushing kind of towards us. Now it's the waiting game. We're going to let this dry nice and solid. Next step is to test fit it before we go any further. What you should have with the test fit is a nice flush feel up against the side cheeks. You can see on the side there, it's nice enough against the edge on both sides. That's excellent. We're going to take these little reference dials. And, and if you guys haven't gotten your uh, barbecue skewers already, uh, we use them in every single one of our builds. They're found in grocery stores. Um, just ask them for barbecue skewers. Go ahead and line up your dowel with the edge of this and just poke through. Don't go try to go completely through on both sides. Just do one side at a time. Slowly twist them with that point there. And we're going to go ahead and leave that in there because what we're going to do now is we're going to physically put tension on this whole thing. Pull it back and give us a nice tight edge on the very front of this. We'll go ahead and get this nice and parallel on the back. And a nice even pull right from the middle, right on back. You can hear that foam just kind of crushing down on there. Tack it in and smooth it out. Put plenty of pressure here because we want the tightest possible seam on this here. We're going to pull this guy out and it flops down beautifully. Really happy with that. Now would be the time to probably cut this shorter for you. You don't want too much sticking out. And I just like to simply make an indent mark, roll it with a razor blade. Don't try to chop through it like a saw because bamboo, the way the strands are oriented, it'll physically uh, shear on you. But if you roll from the outside, you'll get a nice point there. You can always sand that to a better point. We'll go ahead and install this and cut off our extra. Take your time. Make sure each cut is only going flush. You're not cutting into that foam. You want to make it so when people see this that they don't even know that there's a hatch there. It'll really drive them crazy when they see this model. And you open up that front hatch to show them how you get the electronics. There we go. I'm really happy with that right there. What I want to do is I want to waterproof the bottom and also seal these edges of the paper. So if it does get moist, because we're going to be landing, there's going to be a lot of different environments this will be through. I want to protect this fuselage as much as possible. All right, now that we have our front of our fuselage, it's time to put in our power pot and get everything aligned up nicely. So the first thing you want to do is grab the four pieces of foam, the one with the two holes in it, and then the three blanks. We're going to glue these four pieces together. The easiest way to do is we'll just lay it out. This isn't a really structural piece, so you don't have to stress too much about it. I'm just going to put a couple bars on each one. Once these are all nice and dry and you're happy with that, simply go in there and keep in mind this is going to taper so you're going to kind of have to stick it in a little bit and check to make sure that it's not going to rip everything apart when you take it to the very edge. And it's not bulging these out but it's giving a lot of strength. Now the question of the day is, is where do we put this? The easiest way to do it is to simply mount it to your power pod. And being that it's new, it should be rather stiff here. We're going to take this power pot in here and have this be right on the front edge, as you see right here like that. Once you're happy with that fit, we're going to pull this off, leaving this in the back here. And we're simply going to take our hot glue gun and put a bead of glue and wedge it in. Now that we have that in here, we're going to lock this whole mess in really nicely with these little guys that we cut out earlier when you're cutting out your plants. Now for you guys, this is going to actually act as side cheeks to keep this from being able to wander. So when you put the plane back in the, the, fus uh, the fuselage, the power pod, it'll physically give you some alignment so you're not off at all. All right. Now we'll go ahead and apply some glue here and also the portion that's going to go up against the sidewall. And we're going to reach inside here. And I'm sorry guys, my big hands are in the way. This will also further lock down the whole assembly and keep it nice and clean. Repeat the process on the other side. 
And if it's a little bit off, if it's a little bit wider, don't be afraid. It's only meant so when you stick this back in here, it gives you the general area that you need. So this pops right down and in just like you see here. You go through, if you did everything right, that barbecue skewer should pass right through the existing holes from our other airplanes. There we go, just like that. So that's gonna hold the whole back assembly in here. And just like we've done in our nut balls, our FT flyers, our baby blenders, we're simply gonna go ahead and twist this little barbecue screw right through the center, about an inch back on both sides. You can remove this whole assembly. We'll put a drop, just a drop of glue right on the beginning there. And with the twisting motion, we'll drive that barbecue skewer right in, keeping us parallel and as nice as possible. Once you're happy with that, we'll go ahead and do one final test fit. And the fuselage can be put aside and we can move on to the tail. Our motor, our power pod, our fuselage are now all complete. The next step is to simply move on to the tail and the booms and we're ready to finalize everything and go flyer. This is a banking ink airplane unless you want to do a rudder mod uh, like you saw in the silver one. This, these fins are going to be untouched. We don't need to do anything with these. All we need to simply do is take our elevator and crack it just where we put our score line, cut our bevel on the end. Our next step will be to install our fence onto our stabilizer. And by doing that, we're just gonna test the fit, make sure, we're sure we get a full range of motion up and down, which we do no problem. Now the booms, which we have here, will actually be mounted on the inside. So we don't have to worry about getting too much glue on the bracing. After we get these booms on, we'll go back with glue and we'll reinforce these area. Make sure when you get your balsa wood uh, booms that you actually make sure they're nice, true, and straight and that they're not crooked. Go ahead and put our our glue down. This is a one time I'd strongly recommend taking your time to make sure this is true and square. No one likes a crooked rudder. Our next step now that we have our tail assembly complete is to install the booms onto it. And I'm gonna take the back end of this to the hinge line of my elevator. So very easy to reference this area. No special measurements required at all. I'm gonna slide this and kinda move it around, break that surface tension, spread it nice and even. And then this is where you really want to take some time to make sure that you have a nice solid glue joint. So hold it in there and let it thoroughly dry and then go back and then apply another bead of hot glue on both top and bottom. This will also brace your rudder beautifully. Make sure you have full range, which we do. This next step I'm going to try to do upside down for you guys. What you're going to want to do though is you're going to want to hold your wing with the trailing edge at the edge of a building board. Reason being is that the tail is going to come off this edge. So we're going to take our little jig here, we're going to line up the back trailing edge, the center line, and on the side here, we're going to simply draw a line for reference. Once again, draw on our line from the trailing edge towards the leading edge, giving ourselves a little indication of where it is. Now that we have that, we're going to go ahead and test fit our line to make sure everything lines up well. Next step will be to apply glue and sit it down. Line them up the very edge of these marks here. You want to make sure when you put this trailing edge down that the triangle is perfectly perpendicular. If it's off in an angle, acute or obtuse, we're going to have a problem with it pulling one direction or the other. So while the glue is still drying, is a time to check this out and make any adjustments if necessary. Lay a bead of glue right up against the boom on all four sides because we do not want this coming loose. We're going to cut an access hole for our servos. Now what we're going to want to do is take the top of the fuselage, flip it inverted, and simply trace out with that center line. And this is the home stretch for us. If you guys haven't noticed though, we have our wing and our tail boom all glued here. We have a hole there. The reason we put the hole there is for our servo uh, leads to go through. The next step is gonna be, we're gonna install our control horns. Now these are the laser cut control horns we have. We really like them, but you can use any control horn you want. Just simply use the reference mark off the plans on where you wanna locate and make sure that the holes of your control horn line directly over top of the hinge line itself. All you need is about a half inch either way. This has a great roll rate. All right, and our last step will be to install a control horn on the elevator. 
once again making sure to keep those holes on your control horn directly over your hinge line. If they're not evenly over the hinge line, it'll actually give you more up than down. And we don't want that. We want to even throw each way. Let that dry. Now it's time for our servos. Now, if you guys have been following the swappable series, it's very simple. Usually we just install the servo, uh, making sure the orientation is the way we want. In this case, I'm going to want the orientation of the lead point forward to cut the distance out between this hole as short as possible. We're using a Hextronic uh, 9 gram servo with a linkage stopper. And this is the way to go with the swappables because you can adjust every one of your airplanes to fly perfectly. And that way, when you go from one plane to another, you don't have to change all your trims. And we're simply going to put a drop of glue underneath each, each one of these tabs here. Push it down so it globs up through the hole and that'll lock it in beautifully. If you're worried about it, you can always go back around and uh, physically put beads of glue on each side. And the last step will be for our elevator servo. You're going to want to actually have the servo butted up against the actual boom. That'll give you extra strength and uh, rigidity. And also, you, you want to be strategic about where you put it. I want this wire to run straight back along the bottom of this and go right to my elevator right here so I can brace it without it being too seen or too noticed. We'll simply cut this out. Take care not to cut your servo leads. Put this in the orientation we want to. We want to keep this up just the slightest bit so the bottom of the keeper of this uh, linkage stopper doesn't bind against the bottom of the wood. So we want to be very careful that. That's why it's very important to put your control arm with your linkage stopper already on. Now that we know where that's going to be, I'm going to just put a little bit of glue in between these two surfaces. Slide it down. Stop right about there. Probably a little more than I should have put on. There we go. Now for this step, we're ready to put on our control horns. And uh, I've never gotten to use these before, but Chad threw these in my hands and I'm, I'm eager to try them out. Uh, I don't know if these are called Z-benders or what, but from what I understand, you take it just to the edge here, pull down, look at that, a beautiful Z-bend. You don't have to be too obsessed with throws. As a matter of fact, on this one and also the FT Bloody Wonder, you very, you need very, very small amount of throw to get a large response, just because of the size of the ailerons. Now, I don't know if it's the way it's made or not, but go ahead and uh, Keep that in mind. As you can see that these linkages are going to be nice and tight. We're not going to have a problem, but this guy here is going to want to bow on us a little bit. So we're going to use Chad's trick with the zip ties here, and we're going to simply loop them around, keep all of them orientated the same direction, and we're going to just get just tight enough. We don't want to actually get tight on the wire. We just want to have it be able to freely go back and forth, as you see right here. There we go. We'll just simply hold that down right there. Just keep in mind, it's nice to stay thin back here because if you stay thin enough, you won't be adding a lot of weight after the CG. The more weight you add aft, especially this far back, you have to add a lot more up in the nose. This is the home stretch. Once we get this landing gear on, the next step is to uh, mount everything up, check out our servo throws, make sure our throws are orientated right, balance the plane and go fly. So to do the uh, landing gear, it's pretty much how you guys want to set this up. Now I like big obnoxious tires, but the way we actually fasten these wheels on because we're cheap is we use heat shrink tubing on both the inside and the outside. We simply shrunk the tubing down, put our wheel on, and then shrunk the tubing on the other end. So we're gonna go ahead and set this at the very back here, make sure we're happy with its location, and simply take a small screwdriver, poke a hole in the middle, and the reason we haven't put this on the plans is because we want you guys to be able to size it specifically to your actual airplane. If you notice, we use a lot of barbecue skewers and a lot of popsicle sticks because they're very cheap, readily available everywhere we go, and very strong for their size. And we have it. Now we'll center up our landing gear. And we'll cinch this down nice and tight. And if you want to really cinch it in, simply just take a drop of glue and go along the bead. All right, well, no plane's complete without a nose gear, and we're going to go ahead and do that right now. The best way to show you this landing gear is probably to show you in its completed state. Uh, what we basically did is we took a length of wire, and I'm going to have a three-view drawing on the actual plant itself so you can match it up. But what we basically did is we ran the wire through. We've been a 90-degree angle on both sides. Then at the very crest of the wheel, whatever size you choose, we bent 90 degrees back, and then a little tiny tang up to puncture the plastic. We actually opened up the wire itself to a V to give it some lateral support for side loads. And if you look really close here, we simply use heat shrink tubing once again to go down here and then we, we waved it with an iron to shrink it so it doesn't rub against each side. That gives it nice control and it won't wobble and lock up on you on, on the takeoff. There we go. We're gonna go ahead and uh, put a little bead of hot glue just to kind of set it in place. And the landing gear is simple as that.
final roll test, she's good to go. Now, if you notice, there's a slight positive angle of attack. You don't want your landing gear to be sitting where it's like this. You want a slightly positive angle of attack, so as you give it throttle, the wings want to grab the air and take off. If you ever notice your planes are going really, really fast on the ground and jump in the air, that's mainly because you may have a negative instance of attack like this. So as it's driving, it's actually trying to push down harder. And when it gets enough speed for the elevator to override all that downforce, then it just launches into the air. So always keep it slightly positive. Now is the time when we're going to center up all of our control linkages. So we're going to actually put our pod right on here, power up our transmitter, and then power on our servos. As you can see, every one of them wanted to turn for us. So we're going to go ahead and straighten those out right now. There we go. Now, if everything's right, we should have nice control throw every which way. Now, the next step is the final assembly. To put it together, put your servo screws on, and we'll go ahead and balance her out and go fly her. For installing the uh, fuselage and the wing together, just take your reference marks for your holes for your uh, wing dowel, which is also a barbecue skewer. Simply run it from one end to the other after poking through both ends. Go ahead and just cut this off at the end. Give yourself enough room for a couple rubber bands. We're going to install our Velcro at the very front of the edge of the plane. Keeping in mind that this is meant to carry a lot of weight, so you want your battery all the way forward. If you're not carrying a GoPro, you can carry more battery if you wish. Just go ahead and put a 1300 here, run them in parallel, um, or just uh, run your battery even farther forward on this top shelf, all the way up to the very front nose, you can put a 2200 there. The important thing is no matter what, that the plane balances out properly at the very end. Now that we have our uh, power pot on here, we're gonna go ahead and install our connector. But the nice thing is you can make all your connections and just shove everything right back down through here. Once you have all your receiver and everything loaded down on the bottom, simply line up the center line of your fuselage and rubber band on your wings using the back dowels that were held on your power pod. It's a good idea to keep these at least uh, 3 eighths of an inch long on the back side so you can grip your uh, rubber bands with no problems. Now with this design, it does require that you do make a small extension for this. Uh, if you don't have a soldering station, uh, I strongly recommend that you pick one up. Um, Laser Toys, we have a link for it that we'll provide for you. They have a very good, viable soldering station. It's basically like $35. Uh, it's temperature controlled and it works really well. But solder up yourself a linkage. If you have any questions, we do have a video showing you how to do solder joints like this. Uh, that way it'll reach the power pod and you don't have to keep your battery too close. We'll simply go ahead and snake our battery right on through here. And we fasten it on that Velcro, just like this. All right, once we got that done, we can close this up. And as you can see, the plane does balance out now very nicely. All right, ailerons are good, elevator's good. Roughly, like I said, about a half inch to three quarters of an inch each way with 30% expo all the way around. That's also including your elevator. You want roughly half inch. To this one, if you want to really do tight loops, go up to a full inch. But half inch to three quarters is a really nice way to go. But for right now, I do want to go out and get this test flown. And I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this video, uh, building the FT Foul Flyer, and also for support and flight tests and everything you do. I want to encourage you to go ahead and chat it up on the forums, maybe post some experiences, mods that you may have on some of these designs. Also rate the articles and I want to thank Stonecap Productions for sponsoring this episode and I look forward to doing many more. All right, let's get this thing in the air. Well, I guess now the next step is to put some lights in it. <laughs>